Hello, Schmoville. Well, it is phase three still. Still a morning show at this point, still on Wednesdays, but we were starting to edge out of that pretty soon, but we're not there yet. This episode was right after we saw The Dark Knight Rises. There's a lot of controversy on it because, look, Mark scored the thing four out of five Schmoes, and people really, it was the first time Schmoville kind of turned against him and gave him, uh, gave him some guff for scoring it four out of five. So not only did he defend his points during this spoiler review, we had on two very special and Schmoville favorites back then and, and especially today, part of the family. Well, first, we had the pit boss himself, Ken Knapsack, who was not part of the show yet, was just coming in as a guest, sitting down, talking about The Dark Knight Rises. And then we had our pal, Jeremy Johns, for yet another appearance on the podcast. And he called in, he was on the phone the whole time, and we talked about everything concerning The Dark Knight Rises. What we liked about it, what we didn't like about it, concerns, problems, ranking them up against uh, the previous Nolan films. It was, a, it was a great discussion. So if you've never heard this one before and you're a Dark Knight Rises fan, which I know a lot of you are, Check this one out and comment and tell us what you think. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please do that here and catch up on some old episodes. And if you're not watching the live show as it is today, it's every Thursday night, 6 to 8 p.m. PST on SchmoesNo.com. Or you can watch um, the episode the very next day on SchmoesNo YouTube channel, Friday mornings. There it is. That's it. And um, enjoy it. Great. Live, Live from Universal Studios Hollywood in beautiful Los Angeles, California. ToadHopNetwork.com. Radio worth watching. Radio worth watching. Oh, man, it feels like Christmas, doesn't it? It does. Because I mean, it's another Wednesday with you, buddy? Of it, course. No, because there's some big stuff going on. Um, and, uh, you know, this, this is the big podcast. This is the one that a lot of people have been waiting for. I've been waiting for it. You, uh, you've been waiting for it. Our guests have been waiting for it. Guys, it is the biggest podcast of the year. It is the spoiler-heavy Piranha 3DD. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's right. Uh, all the secrets about all of those flesh-chomping fish right, no. that you never knew. We're, As the president of the Kelly Brook Fan Club, I'm happy to be here. Yes, nice to have you here. That's why you have your expertise. Um, yeah, we're going to be ha- talking Dark Knight Rises. And before I do that, I want to bring in our guest. Our guest is, is on the, the line as One well. One of our guests. One of our guests. We have two guests today. And so here is what uh, we are going to be doing, guys. Dark Knight Rises, spoiler-heavy show. We're going to be doing kind of a roundtable thing, and we're going to be taking phone calls. We're going to be tweeting. Um, you guys tweet us at, at @schmozno. Ask us all the questions and stuff that you would like us to cover. We're going to try the best that we can in an hour. And here are our guests today. All right, joining us is a Schmozno regular, our buddy Kenny Nabsock. What's up, Kenny? Yeah. Thank you for having me. And once again, pinch hitting for hot women. Yeah, I know it's true. No, <laughs> we, no, we, we couldn't get Katie Sack off. Right. right. We we do, we pushed her back. We couldn't get Catherine Reitman. Right. So we got the third most attractive human we know. Whoa. Ken Knapsack. Fourth, because our other guest is actually on the line, but he's but he's on but he's on via phone, and that is our good buddy Jeremy Johns. Jeremy, what's up, bud? I would not miss the Piranha Double D podcast for anything. <laughs> so I'm no. glad to be here. Yeah, well, that was my little surprise to you. I, I duped you by telling you it was Dark Knight Rises, and then Piranha 3D. I knew you'd be excited. I'm going back to bed. Yeah, good night. <laughs> um, okay, so well, and of course that is the voice of Christian Harloff, one of the schmoes. And in this corner from Wake Forest, number twenty-two is Mark Ellis. And I announced it like that because this could get a bit of a this could get a little tested. Could get ugly. All right, but I'm here, here to mediate. I'm a referee for this one, right? Yeah. Now here's what we're going to do because we have a lot of different perspectives on the the Dark Knight Rises, the film. Um, now, so not as opposed to the video game. Now, so what we're going to do here is Kenny, you have fresh eyes. You just saw it, so we're going to ask Kenny's take. Then I want to talk to Jeremy and see how Jeremy's kind of marinated it, because Jeremy saw it before uh, Jeremy saw it a little earlier. So. Jeremy saw it like a year ago. He's got a lot of time to sit down and think about it. Right, so, um, okay, so let's talk to K- Kenny first. Kenny, you just saw it yesterday. Absolutely. What Monday. are your initial thoughts of the film? I'm going to start big, then work back small. I think this is officially now one of the great American epic trilogies. Wow. Well, that, this that, is Star that Wars, is Lord of the big. Rings. That's starting big. It, it, it capped it off so nicely, and uh, we'll talk about what might come after this, but uh, capped it off so nicely. Uh, the last 30 minutes of the film were worth the price of uh, any emission and popcorn you might pay. Um, were there problems? Yes. Was it perfect? No. But overall, you left the theater going, that's how I wanted that to end, and I feel like the journey that started 2005 was worth it. Okay, and uh, so, all right, Jeremy, now you saw it, we talked about it, Jeremy and I were able to talk about the movie, and, um, you know, and it was nice to hear, because he, he wanted to, he was dying to talk to someone about it. Yeah. So, we finally talked about it, and Jeremy, you know, you've had some time to sit on it, what are your thoughts on the film as of today? 
Uh, well, I've seen it three times as of now. Wow. Because I always have, yeah, well, another friend's always like, I'm going to go see it for the first time. I'm like, I'll go with you. So that's <laughs> happened a couple times since I saw it for the first time. Um, I love it. I, I still prefer The Dark Knight. I, in The Dark Knight Rises, I didn't think there was that one performance by Keith Ledger's Joker that was like, that guy stole the show, but the movie as a whole is great. Um, I agree that this is one of the best trilogies in, in modern cinema that we have, honestly. Um, and I agree it's not perfect, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a kick-ass movie for sure. Okay, I mean, I like I like it more and more every time I saw. It. Like the second time, I was like, "Oh, I like it better than the first time." Okay, and that's... I saw it the third time, and I'm like, "I like it better the second than the second time." So that's good to know because I um I have I've only seen it once, and I'm still riding off the high when I saw it. And I it's one of those movies to me when I saw it, I was I was drinking the Kool Aid. I'm like, okay, maybe is this is this an episode one thing that I'm doing? And then I thought about it, and yeah. I and I started thinking about it, and I'm like, it's not because there's so many great moments in this film, and I thought that I love The Dark Knight. And if you guys watch our review on that, I rave over that one. The reason that I'm starting to like The Dark Knight Rises just a little bit more than that one is I just think that the end of the film, like Kenny said, it ties up so nicely, and there's just so much more of a of a climax than of this whole entire trilogy, and that to me was satisfying and why I ultimately enjoyed the film. And I enjoyed the film as well, and I uh, think that, like everybody else here, it is one of the great American trilogies of the modern era. Having said that, this movie could have been... And Batman and Bane sitting on a rocking chair at Cracker Barrel, and it still would have been one of the great trilogies because the first two films were so good. I gave The Dark Knight Rises four out of five schmos because, like everybody says about the ending... Yeah, I don't, go ahead. I, want, I just I don't want to address that four out of five. Why are you putting you. your hand in my face? I didn't tell you to stop. I just want to address that. I want to address, because look, you're getting heated, and yeah, I am ready to go. I, I get it. We're five it. minutes in. Look, look more, ladies and gentlemen, I, and look, I appreciate all the fans' passion because anytime you inspire passion in people, you're doing your job as an artist. Death threats were given. Well, no death threats were given to you. <laughs> there were death threats given to other reviewers on yeah. Rotten Tomatoes, which is insane. Now, now here's the thing. Mark did give this movie a four out of five, which is not a bad <laughs> review, and people shit. It on his face, and it was insane. Oh, sure. Now, Jeremy, yeah, let me ask like you a question, that. Jeremy. Why, Go like, ahead. because of this? Why? Obviously, there have been movies that have followed two great ones. Why does this one have so much passion from people who hadn't even seen the film? <laughs> I, uh, I, I can't even answer that. I can't speak to the people. I do know that um, when people have a, 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 a pretty a preconception of the movie, uh, they they're like, "Oh, it's the third Nolan movie." And it's going to be great no matter what. And so, if you give it a good review, then the, yeah, they'll they'll shit and piss all over you. Like uh, it was kind of like uh, when in my uh, Prometheus review, I gave it. I was like, oh, or it was a uh, yes, uh, my Alien, my movie, oh, right, right, right. Alien. I was right. like, no, it's enjoyable. Uh, but they're like, no, it's the greatest movie ever made. You piece of shit, you know. So right. like, people yeah. really, really will jump down your shit if you don't give it a review as high as they think it should be. But but even though, because with Jeremy, have, but. But Jeremy, the difference though with that, like aliens, people at least had a reference. You know what I mean? They had seen it. Like, so yeah. they could say, you're wrong, boo, 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 as opposed to Mark, who some of these people hadn't even seen it yet, but they're like, how dare you give it a four yeah. out of five? It's, it's, and, and you have to admire the, the from, you have to admire the Nolan. Well, Nolan, that I have. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, no, 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 no. You're, 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 you're talking about you, how I handled it. I, you, look, yeah, you did handle it well. I'll give you that. I, and, I liked, and by the way, you can say whatever you want about me. I actually enjoy it. So yeah, it whatever was, you do. It was, it was very fun. It was, a, it was a nice interaction with Schmoville and some new people in there. But, um, but, you know, I think back to when we were the age of a lot of our fans now, yeah. the, like when episode one came out, and you read reviews online, and you heard that at some of the screenings the applause was more tepid than anything else, and yeah. it wasn't people going crazy, and you're like, oh, F them. Right. I'm going to love this movie. Right. I understand. I mean, I, look, I get, I get it. I, it. It makes it a lot of fun, and it, you know the experience. And so I just, it, it was very cool to see the passion and show you how much people really cared for this franchise. Now, a couple of things that I wanted to talk about before we get into the, uh, you know, the as far as certain plot points and stuff that we want to cover, and we will be taking phone calls and tweets. Something I think we need to address on this thing, on this show, is that um, you know the box office this week. We, we usually do a segment called Box Office Sunday, and we didn't do it this Sunday. Uh, the numbers came in, and obviously because of the tragedy that happened in Colorado, Mark and I decided that we didn't think it was appropriate to release the numbers and stuff that had come out. 
And it, and it, it I, th- I think personally it had an effect on the numbers as well. And I think it had a huge yeah, effect on the numbers I do. because it just felt weird going to the movies. It just yeah. had that overall cloud where you just, let's do something else this weekend. We can wait to see Batman. I, you know, and that's so true because last night we saw a screening of The Watch and it was a press screening mm-hmm. and I was still looking over my shoulder weirdly, like the way I would when I go to a horror film. It's so stupid, but oh, it's like, like nothing's going to happen, I don't think, but it's like, but because the media is so in my head at this point. I brought my mom to the screening. Yeah. I was just sitting next to my mom the whole time, holding her shit. Yeah. But Jeremy, how did I mean? How did you, uh, you know, how do you think that the numbers were affected on this? Um, I think they were affected a bit for sure. Like you know, when you see those initial numbers, you're like, all right, two million more than Dark Knight. I, I thought it was going to be more than that, and then for sure, it, it, it had an effect. Um, but everyone's different. Like for me, I saw it twice this weekend, and I, I, I was, I never once was like, oh yeah, this is going to be how I'm going to go out, but. If I was going to go out, I'd like to do it in the Dark Knight Rises for sure. So. Right, um, and Kenny, were you at all? Th- did you did it enter your head while you're watching? Why did you, you wait so until up? yesterday to see it, Kenny? What is so damn important uh, in your life? You want to know why? I'm yeah. a, a, my day job, I'm a, a security director, and I handle uh, movie theaters, so I had a kind of a busy oh, wow. weekend oh, <laughs> dealing with the really? customer base. Wow, um, I didn't know you had that kind of power in the I, world. I do. Well, that's a great question for you. Then, like, did you see? Did you see an effect on? on Absolutely it? not. No, absolutely not. Okay. Um, overall, in the nation, was there? Yeah, clearly. At our specific location uh, in the San Fernando Valley, no, absolutely okay. not. Okay. All right. Well, again, on, on Mark and I also address this to our hearts and prayers go out to everybody um, in Colorado. That was awful. I hope they just shoot that guy in the nuts with a BB gun. Um, okay. So uh, that, that's my that's my my two cents on it. Now let's talk about actual plot points of um, you know the, the the Dark Knight Rises things that we want to talk about. We're going to take a phone call right now. We got George calling in. Georgie, what do you got? Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, man? Um, okay, so I've seen this movie twice now. I saw it two days in a row, once in IMAX, once not. And the Jeremy said that there was no one in the in the film that really stole the show like Heath uh, Ledger did. Is this I, I, I know. I, I, I thought ch- Mike, Michael Caine was phenomenal. Agreed. I thought he should, he should get... Georgie, we're gonna have to cut you off there. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. I really appreciate the phone call. I don't think that was Georgie. That, that was Bane. Yeah, I think that, that was Bane, Bane that <laughs> called in. Bane. Well, why would Bane say? Michael I actually Bane understood him more than Bane, though. I will point that out. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, no. So we had um, uh, that George actually was talking about Michael Caine's performance, and so, you know, that's one of the things a lot of people have been taking away from this movie was how great uh, Michael Caine was. Yeah, if you watch it, our review, I even just had that moment in there where we're mentioning everybody because it's a huge cast, and I don't think. Any of us had a, had a problem with any of the performances no, in the no, movie. No, no, Some no. of them surprised me, like Anne Hathaway. But going into it, you know Morgan mm. Freeman's going to knock it out of the park, and you know Michael Caine's going to crush it. I, I think Michael Caine had to carry a bit of the emotional core of the film in small bits, and I think uh, yeah. he, he that that worked uh, because that was kind of the emotional structure was him, Bruce Wayne, their history, and kind of as, as as Harloff points out, the uh, the Rocky Three type of conversation. They yeah, had. and you get and the he, feeling that, that that's the one thing that's keeping Christian Bale semi sane is that he still has right. a buddy in Alfred. Because his his girl died eight years ago, yeah. well, so now he's just kind of in this, this this weird ether. But he's got Alfred and, to keep him somewhat attached to reality. Yeah, if you've seen what, those Michael Caine acting videos, you know he could pull it off. Well, yeah, so it's Michael Caine's faith acting going video. In. Well, I have I have um, a Rocky Three shirt on today in honor of the the that, that's did it not remind you of Rocky Three when he when he's got him in the hallway and he's just like you can't win Rock this guy will kill you to death inside of three rounds and then he fights him gets his nuts kicked he was in traded. Rock and then he was goes traded. to train yeah, yeah then he goes. And trains and he comes back and he does meet. Well, yeah. So I mean, Jeremy, you still there? Do we do we lose Jeremy? Great. Jeremy quit. Uh, J- <laughs> He's done. He's watching. Do we have Jeremy. <laughs> J- Jeremy wanted to go see the movie again. You know what's great though is that Michael Caine was kind of the Mick. He was kind of the Burgess Meredith yeah. of Rocky Three. And by the way, Burgess Meredith, he had a little something to do with Batman back in the sixties. Oh, he sure oh, did. Yeah, nah, nah, he was the Penguin. Uh, all right, okay, can we give credit to to uh, Lord Peter Baelish in the opening? Oh, of course. Yeah, right. we I love seeing Littlefinger from yeah. Game of Thrones. Yeah, Mark, a, Mark right CIA now has this clueless look on his face, but eventually you'll know what he's talking about. Um, Is that some sort of Magic the Gathering well, deck well, that I'm no, not aware of? By, by episode three, to, three of Game of Thrones. Right, look, Kenny, guys, I've seen three Ray, episodes of Game oh, of Thrones. Right, you're still guys, taking guys, notes. Re, re, I don't know re, re, the names. with the Game of Thrones. We're talking Dark Knight Rises here. And oh, what, the Batman movie. That's right. And now one of the things, though, that scene, though, that Kenny did bring up that our boy uh, is in in the scene there... They reworked that scene, if you notice, because we saw it in IMAX uh, mm-hmm. when they did uh, the Mission Impossible screening, and it was it was different. Bane's voice was different. You couldn't, you definitely couldn't understand. You, and I thought the voiceover was um, very noticeable, and I didn't mind it. Some people did mind it. How did you guys feel about it? 
I didn't mind the voice. Uh, um, I sound like an old Jewish grandfather down in South Beach, but I couldn't understand the guy half the time in the movie. I'm like, what did he say? What did he say? Uh, I, I just had an issue with that, but the, the voice being different than kind of the big buff 200-pound uh, 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 creatine-filled Tom Hardy. Um, he's not a public speaker. He's a Jackie Mason. He's got a rhythm. You can get into it. I love the voice in this one. I didn't notice that much of a difference from when we saw the, the first six minutes before Mission Impossible 4. He was hard to understand then. And then in the actual film, I actually liked that you had to strain to hear him. I liked that not everything came out clearly. I thought it helped make the villain that much more menacing. Yeah. yeah well, it's the Darth Vader effect. Well, there's sure. something to be said for silence or uh, loud action and have, have Having to concentrate, I just felt mm -hmm. for for such a big part yeah. of the movie, I didn't want to have to go. Wait, what? I what did he? Say? Right. It, it just took me out of it a couple couple times in the film. Some of his lines were so fantastic, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, the the Gotham line is great, but he, you know, the, the the line when the guy's like, "I gave you money, and that gives you power over me." Yeah. Like that stuff, like that. I was just like, and, oh. And Tom Hardy for it's almost akin. I I kind of say to uh, Edward Norton in Kingdom of Heaven, which is an odd reference, but I think one of my favorite performances from Ed Norton, and he, you can't even see his face the entire time. Right. Tom Hardy really had a presence the entire time. I agree with you. Now, real real quick, people. So in case you're wondering where Jeremy Johns went, his phone died apparently. So, um, Jeremy, if you're uh, if you if you can charge your battery up, call us back. What in happened is that there's a crime being committed somewhere in the Great Northwest, and Jeremy's got to go stop it. Then he's going to come back like, oh, what I missed? That right. was just here. All right, so we're taking phone calls. Tweet us at at Schmoes No. Phone number is eight 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 five two zero four three seven four. We're taking phone calls from Schmoville. Let us talk to uh, Matthew. Matthew, what hey, do you I, got, dude? I just wanted to know, um, do you think Tom Hardy's performance can seem a little different um, as a standalone performance, and not just compared to Joker? Uh, that's a great. That's a great Love point. The question, Thank you, Matthew. Matthew. That's a great question because you know why it's tough at how it plays out. Again, this is spoiler heavy, so it plays because for the whole time Bane seems like this menacing, just Darth Vader like dude. But mm -hmm. oh, well, all in all, he's kind of like a bodyguard if you think about it. There's no he's way he's doing it for love. He's yeah. Costner and <laughs> Whitney Houston. Right. He's doing. He's crying at the end, which was a spectacular moment. Yeah, I think. it was. The, the tears were fine. There was, you know, I, it, there's no way that this performance would get recognized by the Academy simply because in the Dark Knight, not only did you have the tragedy with Heath Ledger, but you also had that film was Heath Ledger versus Batman and it was Heath Ledger's movie right up until he, he that that end building scene the, right. the energy that the Joker had from scene one in Dark mm -hmm. Knight just uh, dominated that movie and, um, but there's so many more moving parts in the Dark Knight Rises too there's, right. there's just more characters it's a bigger cast and yeah. you're right. following around you're jumping from here to there to here and Bane is one of those parts but he's certainly not in anything that would be that he had a chance to give a performance that would win a statue alright right, now we're gonna I want to get into some um, some problems and stuff too, because Mark, I know you had a couple problems with it, but, uh, but well, but, that'd be the Mark Ellis corner because well, all you guys. No, no, there, there, no, there, I, I, there are I, some I'm things. I'm here to defend you on some of the things. I, no, about but it. there, there are some things I don't agree with you with, but there are some things that I think are uh, I can pass. But mm -hmm. one of the things you, someone said before there were no bad performances, and I didn't jump in on it, and I forgot about it, and that's because uh, oh. our buddy Lucas Lucas Wentz um, tweeted us, and it was and it was so unforgettable. By the way, um, okay, so only performance he had a problem with was Matthew Modine. And not because it was bad, it just felt unnecessary. I disagree with Lucas, it was bad. Uh, <laughs> some of his lines like, well, I'm going to do what Gordon didn't do, I'm going to catch the Batman. Um, and hey, real quick, Jeff, so apparently uh, Jeremy's phone is uh, is not dead. Can we call him back? Stop, all right, yeah, Jeremy, don't call Jeremy, don't call us. We're gonna we'll call you. Um, all right, so we, Matthew Modine was uh, I mean, just awful, awful. Yeah. He, he didn't ruin the movie for me, but um, awful, awful. Can I say, yeah, by okay. the way, us getting Jeremy back on I the think line? We got, Jeremy, is, we got you. Oh yeah, All right, I'm coming good. back for the Matthew Modine talk. For okay, sure. good. So, Jeremy, what did you think of Matthew Modine? Oh, I thought he was fucking terrible. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What's the pro I mean, and I'm not defending Matthew Modine, but why was he so bad? It's Matthew Modine. I, I need He's to looking, hear it too. I, I'm not defending him either, but he didn't He's take me. He's a good actor. What happened? What you got, Jeremy? Here, like that one scene where they're chasing the Batman, and uh, he, <laughs> Batman, I, I, he either takes a turn or he's on a street, and Matthew Modine, it's almost like he looks at the camera and he goes, and he's as dumb as he dresses. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, yeah. not at all. Oh, dude, I'm with you so much. It was the one performance that every time he was on, I was like, come on, Bane, if you're going to kill somebody, let's go. Um, yeah, exactly. But uh, you know, and his character arc and everything, too, would happen. I just thought it was unnecessary, and that's the one thing I do agree with, uh, you know, with that... 
Lucas just tweeted in. But um, okay, so this is uh, another tweet by at Colm Bronson who asked, "Do you think any of these performances would get recognized by the Academy?" Nope. No. No. Sorry. No one, huh? And you- it's not a complaint. It's just it's look. Look, they sometimes when you have a great trilogy like we said this yeah. is, you'll get some, something will get a statue, and that happened in the second one. And mm-hmm. there's just too many moving parts in this one. You don't think Michael Caine has a shot? No. no. Okay. And, no. Oh, and I think, uh, generally speaking, uh, if this movie gets an Academy Award nomination, it'll be because The Dark Knight didn't, and they're going to try to appease the fans. And, I, I mean, ultimately, I don't put much stock in the Academy at this point. It might get a U reviewer's nice. nomination. Nice. I like that. I like that. Very well very well plugged, my friend. This will get a lot of U reviewers. I of think course Bane's, I think Bane's probably a shoe in to get one for uh, for Best Villain. Yeah. But yeah. I just don't think that it, if, this, if they tried to campaign this thing to get a Best Picture nomination just for The Dark Knight, then that's wrong because this movie is... It's just not good enough. It, it's not a good enough film, in my opinion, to be nominated. So we don't for a think. Best so picture. you don't think Nolan or, uh, or or the movie itself will be nominated as either. I think no one's got a chance. I just didn't think. I, I thought the end was so haphazard and tangled up that it just. I don't. To I don't see how. It, it 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 felt like a con- it, it, when I can get into this then I'll yeah, talk no, no, about it. No, no, let's do it. Let's let's do your- go ahead and kill Ellis. Well, yeah, okay. right. Let's all right. Let's let's do. Ellis, <laughs> you have my permission to die. Right, exactly. Right, so let's do what your main things that you had wrong with the film. Uh, I'll start Please. it off, and we can go around the table yeah, yeah, from yeah. there. Let's my main it. problem with the film is that I also didn't like some of the fight scenes early on. I just thought they didn't look realistic. I thought there were a lot of like punching and bad reactions, and it just looked fake to me. And that that takes you out of the movie a little bit. But the end of the film for the for most of this trilogy, it felt so real. It felt like this is actually happening in mm-hmm. Gotham City. Okay, mm-hmm. the end of this movie, it felt like it went back to it may as well have been a 1960s Adam West Batman plot when we have a fusion bomb that we got to drop in the middle of the ocean and oh by the way we're chasing a truck that has this bomb and these people are going over the one place in gotham city where morgan freeman happens to be hanging out directly under don't make me make that leap in a movie like this you've built up this great trilogy don't make me make this stupid leap at the end it's unnecessary there was some contrived <sighs> okay yeah uh, jeremy how, how do you how do you okay. feel about that point because i got my uh my, my things i'm ready to go about um, uh, I, I honestly think that's a good point. I think I, I also, I know what you said about the fighting. Like, you know, when uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt is there and these guys are going to waste him, and then Batman jumps down and he's fighting all these people, and you can see them arc back their weapons but not hit Batman because they're waiting because they're like, well, I can't hit Batman because Mr. Nolan said not to. He said <laughs> just to, you know. And so, I mean, you, yeah, you got to like. notice that happening. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but you got to get over that type of shit, though, too. And I know you did. And I know, like, for me, again, like, I, I it, it's a Batman movie overall. It, it, it didn't go to the point where it's, it's Joel Schumacher. But, yeah, there are some, it, it had the realistic tone. It was, the whole point was the emotion of that. It was Bruce Wayne sacrificing himself you had the raw emotion of everyone like it duped me at first i thought he was gonna get shit canned and then that's i was more worried about bruce wayne surviving than i was worried about oh this is too much like the 60s batman there might be a shark oh, in the water wow. I'm, I'm with you dude I'm, I'm i'm completely with you i'm just saying i know what he's saying no i i get but what he's saying as well but i under the emotion when you're trying to keep when, when you're trying to trick yourself into into liking this cockamamie plot at the end that they cooked up and none of it was realistic at the end it's been a prison state for five months you, the whole food and water thing, you could have made that thing. And I was ha- I had some, a lot of conversations with my buddies after they saw it that you could have made that three weeks. That didn't happen to be – that didn't have to be five months. The only reason it was five months is so that idiot Bruce Wayne could get a stupid back back and shit. Wow, look at so you. He could pull now, you get, himself now, up. Now, now you're getting offensive. I'm just you're saying. It, it, it didn't have to be five months. None of that stuff was realistic to me. All right. Well, I, I was willing well, to buy I, into I, it I, because it was a Batman <laughs> movie. Go ahead, Jeremy. I was going to say that, that was my main uh, gripe was – the, the timing in the movie. I wanted it to feel like five months. I don't know what it is about the Nolan Batman. I like the character development in these movies so much that I will take that over any of the action any day of the week, although the action is exciting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted I wanted the movie to be three and a half hours long, yep. so I really felt like it was five months down there, maybe at a point in his recovery. He hits this really low, really hard low, where he's like, it's never going to happen. Gotham's just going to burn without me. As, I mean, I, I thought they could have just drawn that out for 
45 minutes more, so it felt like five months. That's what I wanted. I love that point you made because I know a lot of people, it's a two-hour, 45-minute movie. That's a long movie, but I could have gone for four hours in this yeah, time because too. it did feel like, yeah. it. They, even though even with all that time, it felt like it was a little forced together at the end, and they could have extrapolated that more, and I probably would have believed it a lot yeah. more. Well, but you know, it's just that you're so invested at this point, too, yeah. and I think that's one of the reasons that you, because you, you were so invested because you love Batman Begins and Dark Knight so much that maybe it just didn't, it didn't hit the absolute expectations that you wanted Hey, look, to? if the Redskins go 9-7, and seven, I'm happy we're in the playoffs. But if we go 14-2, and two, we better win the goddamn Super Bowl or else I'll leave a little disappointed. Uh, see, I thought they won the Super Bowl with this movie. Um, the Redskins did? Really? Thank you. No, the, I, I would this think, movie. As far as the length, too, the length was fine. I have no problem with the length. It just it felt longer than Dark Knight. And we well, it was. Also and I yes, talked it about did. that. Which, well, I mean, yeah, literally it yeah. might have been longer, but I'm saying that the storytelling uh, early on, um, they could have sped up some stuff, cut out some of the math modine, like you said, stuff like that, to have more time at the end. And that's early on, I checked my watch maybe once, I will admit. Yeah. But okay. by the end, I did. We have a lot uh, we're going to cover, too, in the second half. But, um, you know, the one thing, guys, we, we do this ripped apparel, the shirts we've been talking about a lot. Go and ripped apparel, R I P T apparel, and uh, just type in Schmoes. You get a dollar off the shirt. They have really cool designs. And we'll be right back on the Schmoes No podcast. Jeremy Johns, Ken Nassauger here, taking your calls and tweets next. Welcome back to the Schmoes No Podcast. Uh, we got a little bit of a show here coming up this weekend at uh, the John Lovitz Comedy Club. You can come see Daryl Wright and Danny Sparks do their show, The Right Turn, live on stage at the John Lovitz Comedy Club. It is Saturday, July 28th at 8 p.m. You can get your tickets at thelovitz.com or toadhopnetwork.com. A live podcast, Christian. That sounds interesting. Uh oh, uh oh. You're setting us up. You're setting us up. Okay, all right, now we're back. Jeremy, you still with us, buddy? I sure am. Okay, I, as long as we talk about Matthew Modine, I'm good. No, we're not. We're not. But what, one, there's a couple points <laughs> that we're going to spell people. Yeah, and we're here with Jeremy Johns. You can find at youtubecom slash Jeremy Johns J A H N S, and you can our buddy Ken Knapsack. Follow him at Twitter at at Cospan K O Z P A N. And um, okay, so here's the thing. Now, Jeremy, there's a point in The Dark Knight Rises where. Um, Bruce Wayne tells Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character, who we're going to get into in a second here, that Batman's a symbol. Batman, yes. Batman can be anybody. And that, that being said, we have on one of the lines here calling in, Jeremy Johns is calling in. So um, we're, we're going to call. We're going to see which Jeremy Johns we actually have. Uh, Jeremy, you're on with Jeremy and uh, and Christian and Mark. How are you, my friend? Ah, it's a shitty call. I got to drop it. Oh, that would have been funny, but it, uh, he he was calling from his basement. And... You see what happened is it is that he found out that Jeremy got hurt and the Jeremy we lost Jeremy's call, and so he decided to dress up like Jeremy. But right. Jeremy, as you know, he's you're the only one that's not wearing hockey pants. Right? Okay, I'm not wearing hockey pants. Um, let's talk about the Joseph Gordon Levitt storyline because a lot of people were talking about this. Um, all right, now this is what happens. A lot of people when this started, Jeremy and I were on the phone about this. I had predicted that Joseph Gordon-Levitt was ultimately going to be Asriel, if we know the comic book line. It's the guy who takes over as the Batman character once yeah. uh, Bruce Wayne gets his back broken. I got some insider info on that. We got. I, I talked to some comic book people this weekend. I was doing some recon, and so apparently Robin takes over for Batman for a while. Um, and then what happens is that, that that is when Batman is healing, when Bruce Wayne is healing, and once his back becomes healthy enough, then Robin puts down the cow, and then Batman, Bruce Wayne, comes back as Asriel. Uh. So Bruce Wayne is actually Asriel. No, that's not that's not the truth. I that's I, that, that's I, what I heard from no. that's what I heard from my sources. So. No, I think your sources are doing drugs. They may um, be. Uh, it's but, the comedy store. So this is what happens in this movie. So we we find out that Joseph Gordon Levitt is what what was really cool was the fact that if you guys are familiar also that I didn't didn't uh, you know once Bruce Wayne took Robin in he kind of raised Dick Grayson a little bit and taught him the ropes. Yeah. He ultimately kind of through Nolan's spin does that in this movie by funding the orphanage. I loved that play on it, and yeah. Kenny, I'd like to hear what your what your thoughts were about how Joseph Gordon Levitt comes to realize that Bruce Wayne is actually this other dude. Talking about early on, I think he knew yeah. as a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just seems it all come together. I think the story was done very good. Uh, uh, I'm going with my gut instinct uh, at the end of the movie. If that was done wrong and he's revealed as Robin, it could have been a very wah, wah, wah. I was on board. You were okay hit, with when, I was he like, when he said oh, Robin? Did, okay, I felt a little. Do, do we, bit it was like, a little bit, but I was on board with it from the beginning with his character. I think he did a great job. And so, if you if you take that journey and you get to that moment, you, you kind of get a payoff. Weren't we wishing that he would have said Dick Grayson though instead of Robin? 
I, I'd rather have them not say anything and yeah. just let it be. Now we can we can make this movie, then we can sit down and think about what we want to do with Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character. That Now they've pigeonholed themselves into making this guy Robin, and it just felt well, like we, you didn't need we it. We all have Batman and Robin 1997 uh, flashback pains. That we, so Even before that, though, like let's be honest. Who's a huge fan of Robin? Robin? Well, look but, it, but look, but the thing is, too, if this was the Robin that I was getting... I'm happy with this. is the best Robin that we've gotten so far. He's the oh, toughest yeah. Robin, the best one. And th that also brings up a question. We've gotten tons of tweets here about it. Do we think, and I know we lost Jeremy again. We've got to get him back. You um, know, you may want to tweet us for the rest of the show as opposed to trying to call in. Is somebody, lines, well, Josh McCook is trying to call well, in. And so I think Well, I don't want to do us. that because the lines are still, there's some lines open. You can still try to call in. They might be busy. It's 888-520-4374. we got to get Jeremy back on the line because one of the things I really want to know is... Will they give Joseph Gordon-Levitt a spin-off movie? Will that happen? Do you guys think that could happen? Um, if it happens, will Nolan be involved at all? Will it be part of the uh, the supposed uh, Justice League movie? Will he appear as Batman? What, what do you guys think? I'd be happy if there. I'd be satisfied if there wasn't a spin-off. I happy with. I'm happy where the story ended. Um, it obviously in the theater you're like oh okay that's where we're that's where we're going i guess we're just so used to the avengers stuff where everything needs three more movies right for each character <laughs> um the intern at shield he gets a series um but <laughs> you know i'd be happy if it didn't if it does i'm on board yeah i think that uh you know as movie fans we always want more we always want to see more of these characters and sometimes you just got to let sleeping dogs lie Having said that, I wouldn't hate seeing a Batman movie. I think no one would be involved in it in a uh, or a Robin movie. I think no one would be involved in it from an executive producer standpoint. All right, we got Jeremy back. Jeremy, did you happen to hear us talking about the Joseph Gordon-Levitt stuff? Yes, okay. and I want everyone to know I do pay my phone bill. No, that no, is no not me. it's it's our, it's it's definitely it happened already. We have a lot of phone calls coming in. Get so rid of a, the can and the string. Yeah, please. So, what do, what do you think about um, the real quick on the reveal of Robin, and then um, tell us your point on whether or not you'd want to see a spinoff movie? Oh, I personally liked how they did it. Um, I think if it was Dick Grayson, everyone would jump down their shit about it, like oh, he was a cop, and then, uh, I, I mm. thought that. I, it's a point that I made in the recent video I did about Dark Knight Rises was that I think that it's, it's an homage to the character Robin, but I think since Batman kept talking about how, uh, you know, like you said, he was telling him how Batman's a symbol and he could be anybody, I think he's going to take up the mask as Batman, but his name is Robin. I, you know what I mean? That's a great point, and I hope that that happens, because if that happens and they use him as Batman in the uh, the Justice League movie, then I'm okay with that because now I have a Batman that I relate to as opposed to some schmuck they pulled off craft services. That's a very yeah. interesting take, and I kind of like that. I okay. do. And the reason why they couldn't reveal him as Dick Grayson is because of the line she says at the end when she says, you should go by Robin. You can't tell somebody as they're leaving, hey, you should go by Dick. Dick. <laughs> That's true. Richard. You call him Richard. <laughs> Richard Grayson. Um, well, and also uh, a point is, uh, I mean, I don't think he's going to be Robin because that's, his name is Robin. That's like me being a superhero named Jeremy. That's weird. Like, you can't. You can't do that. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's that's very that's a great point. And in all right, so here, Jeremy, you are a superhero. He is. You sure are. That's super punch. Um, don't punch my camera when you come to visit. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's talk about a few of the other performances too, because I know everyone here, and I believe Jeremy as well, was very very skeptical about our next topic, and that ah. would be Anne Hathaway as Catwoman. Um, I thought she was spectacular as uh, Selena Kyle. Yep. Are you yeah, with yeah absolutely. Um, I, uh, she's the the best best Catwoman I've seen since like her and Arkham City are pretty. They're they're pretty Catwoman. That's definitive Catwoman right there. I thought she was great. Now what do we what do we think about the subplot? Like, did anybody see that she might have been throwing off a bisexual vibe there? I had like that that Sharon Stone basic instinct going on with her her roommate. I think it was outright suggested. <laughs> well, let's face it, guys. Anytime anytime a female can ride a motorcycle and own it like that, you got to ask some questions. Maybe they're pretty good at golf. But <laughs> I I mean I I got that there was a romantic connection between. Between her yeah. and and Bruce Wayne. So. Yeah, yeah, I did too. I just, I just. I she mean, definitely I, had that lesbian semester right, in college. You always right. hear yeah. about. Yeah, I she think she's just coming that. out well, of that phase. And I don't want to go super love heavy too. One of my biggest problems was uh, not not her, but it was a scene she was in when she was with that senator, and the senator throws in. He goes after she leaves, and oh. in the very beginning, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the senator the senator goes. Call me. It's like, come on, this ain't Joel Schumacher. I, I think George Lucas had that rewrite right yeah, in that section right there. So, right. But, but that's, that's, that guy was fantastic in that movie. The Brett Cullen, he's a really good actor, and he yeah. was great until mm -hmm. he had to say that yeah. line. All right, we're going to take another phone call here. we got Jermaine calling in from Florida. Hey, Jermaine, what's up, dude? What do you got? 
Um, I was just wondering because my favorite Christopher Nolan movie is Inception. Where do you do you feel The Dark Knight Rises is as good or better than Inception? Great question, Jeremy. Thank you. Um, I, it, that's tough for me because I agree with you, man. Inception is one of my favorite movies of all time, and the reason why yeah. I like Inception a little bit better than than the Batman movies is just it was just so different for me, and I was just taken into a whole different place for that movie. So they they're totally different films, but for me, I liked Inception a little better. But I love. The, the Batman. I'm just such a shill for Batman, and I love that character so much that I can sit and watch even uh, an average Batman movie like uh, the, like Batman Returns over most other things. So I think I'd probably rather watch The Dark Knight Rises again, but Inception, I think, was a better film. Uh, Jeremy, how do you feel about that? And we lost him again. Okay. Uh, Kenny, play the role. Really? Of Jeremy, no. What do you think about right, Inception, I, and where does the Nolan? Well, actually, I'm sorry to cut you off, Kenny. Yeah, I want no to take problem. this call I haven't here. Seen Inception. We got Trisha, <laughs> Trisha from New Hampshire is calling we, in. We, we have guys, fema- guys, we got a girl. Everybody, play it cool. Well, what's cool is she wants to talk about Anne Hathaway as Catwoman, so I want to see a female's take on this. Hey, is it Trisha? Yes, it is. Hi, H- Trisha. How's it going, you guys? Good. How are you, Trisha? What, what do you have for Good. us today? Well, you know, I thought Anne Hathaway. I was, you know, really surprised because you see. You see her in teeny bopper movies, you know, like <laughs> The Devil Wears Prada, and hey. you're a cat woman. And hey. she pulls off this very enigmatic kind of, almost, she kind of reminds me of Pam from True Blood. You yeah. guys watch True Blood? Yeah, yeah I know. sarcastic kind of, like, voice where it just, it works with everything, and she just doesn't care, and and she's able to drop, ass, yeah, she's, and <laughs> yeah, I agree. And she's able to kind of go in and out of that sweet and then hard. And like, you can tell that this Selena Kyle, that she was, had this past that she's able to just manipulate and she's got this edge to her. And I thought that was a really uh, nice choice. She by took Hathaway. all that frustration from exactly. having to co-host the Oscars with James Franco and she <laughs> channeled it into her performance. Right. Trisha, were you worried about her performance going into the film or did you think she would be great? No, we lost. Did okay, that's. Hey, yeah, I hung up on Trisha. I, I, um, you know why? So that's that's dude. what's happening. That's what's happening now. Jeremy, you're back, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, so the problem is that when we're taking other calls, we're dropping, we're dropping. I had something Jeremy. going there with Trisha. I mean, we, that could have been like a Mark's moment. Sorry, so we can't run. So we, we, we can't have Jeremy into the yeah, well, uh, Jeremy, that's fine. You're coming to visit, and we're going to hang out. Yeah. We're going to go to CPK, buddy. That's a good plug. Jeremy Johns on. Jeremy Johns will be joining us um, in the second to last week in August. We're going to be doing a we'll be doing a fall movie preview. We'll be doing some other stuff, and Jeremy will be co-hosting the show. As of right now, our scheduled guest when Jeremy is in town is uh, Sean Astin. So we'll uh, keep uh, keep your uh, calendars open for Breaking now. Breaking news. Yeah. So, all right, now let's talk about a few other things here with The Dark Knight Rises. Although, um, oh, Jeremy, so... Was there anything else you wanted to uh, to hit on with um, with Catwoman, or you were cool with that? So I, I was. Uh, I think everything that was uh, that should be said was said. I mean, the Pam from True Blood <laughs> reference uh, made me laugh because I didn't make that connection until she said it, right. and it's completely true. She totally reminded me of Pam from Cat, uh, from uh, True Blood. But no, I, I, I liked Anne Hathaway. I thought she was great. Uh, Kenny. Well, as as one of the world's biggest Devil Wears Prada marks, I've seen it about fifteen <laughs> times. I still went in skeptical, and I think she delivered. Yeah, and her, and regardless, stuntwoman or not, very nice tush. She crushed it. My only problem was that some of the story that she had, like I, I just didn't like the fact that the whole movie she's pursuing this chip that will get rid of her past. And mm-hmm. you know what, Gotham's been a prison state for five months, so maybe you and Batman don't have this stupid conversation about how he's got the chip and he's going to help you when there's a bond that's going. Going off in six All right, hours. Stop it! Stop it! Right All right, stop open. it! Right, speaking of bombs, but, but there are too many of those little kind of malls, and I get that you can get over a couple yeah. of those, but there were just too many of those sprinkled in to where anyway. I'm like, hey, I didn't order sour cream in my chili. Somebody take it off. I loved it. Keep the sour cream on for me. Um, all right, now so another point that that our, we have a buddy uh, at Tim Sim tweeted us in. He wants to know: Were we surprised at Marion Cotillard being ta- uh, Tala Ghoul, considering how downplayed it was until that twist? Now. The question. Um, yeah. Now, I was not surprised, unfortunately, because yeah, I'm I'm with you on this. Yeah, yeah. because I, unf- you know, I did all that stuff when when the casting. Really, I'm like, oh, they cast her for Catwoman, and then there was like, oh, she might be Ra's al Ghul's daughter, and I'm like, shit. Because the whole time, and it was just a little too convenient during the movie. Every time she was around, soldiers would show up. You know, like, and I, all these things started happening where she never, it was never a clean thing. She always got captured. Like, any, like, she gets announced as the head of the company. 
Bane shows up. I'm like, she's something stinks with this lady in any inception. Looking back, I think you're right. I went into it a little more blind to that. I, mm-hmm. I don't read all the comic books uh, like I probably should, so I was completely cut off guard. And and, and in that moment, it was kind of like. Did you like the moment. twist? Did you guys like the twist? I I did. I, did. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I like the twist a lot. And again, I go into these things and I try to be a little blind. And uh, I'm just bad at watching movies and figuring out who the killer is. Uh, and that you kind picked of a shit. good career. Then. Good. Yeah. I would. Angela Lansbury would own me in yeah. solving a, in solving a mystery. No. Okay, well, so, any, but, and I love the twist. I right. thought it was really cool. Jeremy, how'd you, how'd you feel about it? Yeah, I'm kind of like you. Back in the day when they were casting this movie, um, there was rumors that uh, Marion Cotillard was going to be uh, Talia Al Ghul, and then it was like, oh, no, she's this Miranda Tate chick, and then someone snapped a picture of her walking out of that building wearing that robe, uh, and I was like, maybe she is Talia Al Ghul, and then I didn't think about it in the movie. In fact, I'm I'm one of those idiots that, I was thinking to myself, well, I don't think she's probably Al Ghul because that would make her and Bane brother and sister. Not, oh, maybe Bane's not the kid, maybe it's her. Right. Um, that, that, then, uh, that, that tricked me. Uh, that, that, because when they gave the whole Bane was, uh, was Ra's al Ghul's son, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that, I was like, well, they're really taking liberties here. Yeah. And here's why yeah, it's perfect right. casting with Mary Cotillard because she's a known name, but she's not so uber famous or you don't know her for one kind of role that you'd be like, wait, there's got to be something more to this character. Remember when we saw the, uh, the, the dragon tattoo? Yeah. And you know, Stella. Scarsgar is up to something. Right. Like they're not going to put him in this movie right. to be nothing. Right, exactly. When is he not? She's too fantastic of an actress to just be oh, the love God, interest. A little bit, but love. I thought it was good. She's not such a huge name that you're like, right. oh, she's got. Maybe you just want to be involved in a Batman movie and you love Nolan. Right, so. but she's. I mean, she's just so good. She was great Absolutely. in that role too. And you believe that? I, I wasn't thrilled with how she died in like a very old school movie. It's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> mean like a comic book oh, movie? Yeah. yeah. Crap. The death scene wasn't great, but again, I got over it. Like a 1960s Batman death. Stop that. Um, what, <laughs> a, a need, big topic that Schmoville has been answering. Yeah, this, we're going to get into this here. I'm not leaving with Ellis. Wait, do not leave with Ellis, because there are there are Schmoville people outside with stakes uh, with it, Ellis's head on it. Right. Why do you think I brought my mom to the podcast? She's my human shield. Love you, Mom. All right, so here we go. Um, this is a big question. We have to get into this. The two big movies of the summer were The Avengers and The Dark Knight Rises. The question keeps coming. Coming in, what do you like more, the Avengers or the Dark Knight Rises? I will let the scapegoat of the podcast answer that first. <laughs> oh, we, can't, we can't cop out. No, no saying that they're, they're two completely different things. we got to right. answer one. All right, well, you just took my answer out, so I'll answer. I'll, all right, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, no, we're gonna, Ellis, please, you go, you go ahead first because I want the, you know, the stink bombs to come in first. Um, I, I think that the Avengers is the better movie and I enjoyed watching the Avengers more start to finish. Batman is still my favorite comic book hero, but I thought that the Avengers, for what that was trying to do, it so fully and completely achieved that goal. It set a tone and it nailed it and you never lost pace with the story. It wrapped everything else up so perfectly. I like the Batman character so much, but the end of the movie just got too jumbled for me and I didn't buy it. When I'm believing that the Hulk is really smashing these buildings and taking on these aliens and a guy with the 12th century bow and arrow technology is shooting aliens on flying skiffs more than the end of a Batman movie, then I gotta give it to the Avengers. It earned its 5 out of 5. The Dark Knight Rises didn't. Alright. Uh, Jeremy Johns, what, what what is your answer to that question? Um, well, ultimately, I think that the conclusion of a trilogy, uh, uh, the conclusion of an epic trilogy should end up being better than the introduction of a franchise. Um, I, I ultimately think Dark Knight Rises, I'm going to give it to that. Um, I do think Ellis brought up a good point. They both, uh, well, I think that they both did what they set out to do perfectly, uh, but I think that the Avengers is easier to watch. Like I can pop in the Avengers and watch that easier than I can Dark Knight Rises, because mm-hmm. Dark Knight Rises is just a bit thicker, you know? Yeah. Uh, you have to be in that mode to watch it, but I think Dark Knight Rises is the movie that I would give the crown to. All right, and uh, at Cospan, what do you? Uh... I I uh, I want to say this first. I loved the Avengers. I don't want anyone in a costume to jump me outside when I leave with Ellis. Right. I love coming after the me. Avengers. But for me, watching the Avengers was like babysitting my cousin when it was when he was ten. It was fun. It was uh, it, it's cute. Uh, watching the Dark Knight Rises <laughs> was like picking up my cousin from jail and taking him to a strip club. <laughs> <laughs> it was well just more said. real. 
well gritty said. and f- and just a uh, overall better experience for me. All right. Well, uh, yeah, and the I'm, end may not work out well, just like the yeah. Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. I am not going to shock anybody with my answer. Um, I am also on the Dark Knight Rises, um, and I, f- mostly for the points that were made so far. I I had a hell of a time watching the Avengers. I thought what they did so well, and what I hope uh, Warner Brothers and DC is able to do with Justice League. I thought the Avengers was set up so great from from the you know the the Captain America movies and the Thor movies and every movie that they just set it up throughout the last five. Years. And that's a great point. And let's not lose sight of the fact that I know that The Dark Knight Rises is closing this masterpiece trilogy. And oh, can they pull off closing a great trilogy? Guys, The Avengers had like five movies and I everything know. had to come together perfectly well, right. for that since the, the first Iron Man. And it did. And and because of that, I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I think it, it had a little more fluff to it, which was fine. And which, it's which, that kind of movie. It's got which, a comic because, book sheen to it. Because it is okay. that kind of movie. And it delivered on everything it was supposed to deliver. And I gave the movie five out of five shows. I loved it. Yeah, if they had the fusion bomb thing in The Avengers, yeah. I thought that fits the tone of the Avengers okay. better, so I would have been. I would. I'll give Alice that can point. I, can I make my point here? Can I finish? Can oh, I finish? Damn. Can I finish? Now and again, and I love that movie. It was it, it, up until it was one of the best superhero movies I ever saw. But going off of Jeremy's point, I thought The Dark Knight Rises just concluded an epic trilogy. I was emotionally invested in all the characters from the previous movies. I just, my heart and soul was like, just like, I was just there. I thought Bane was such a great villain. I thought the Ra's al Ghul storyline played out perfectly and everything story-wise, because that was the thing Dark Knight Rises needed to do for me, was it had to conclude a great story, and I thought it did that. And because of it, it's my favorite movie of the year thus far. It did conclude a great story, and I have no problem with it. I, I have the problem with the way it concluded. It was just, it felt a little sloppy. All right, all right, okay. Um, all right, so Jeremy, I'm gonna uh, anything that you want to say because I want to take a few phone calls, and every time we take a phone call, we drop you. So um, <laughs> I want to. I wanna, uh, uh, so is there any, anything that you want to uh, final thoughts on the Dark Knight Rises? And uh, we're looking forward to having you out here pretty soon to do some uh, new collabs. Uh, are you dropping me from from the podcast indefinitely? I, I'm going to try not to, but in case that I do, uh, I want well, yeah, to do you prepare have like for a, it. Do you have like an Atticus Finch closing argument on behalf of the Dark Knight Rises? Oh, oh uh, fantastic! Well, I I think that everything that I would say in closing, you guys uh, just all nailed um, just now in comparing it to the Avengers. Um, I thought it was a great conclusion to a trilogy. It tied in with the first one, which is what part three of a trilogy should do. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, uh, it, it obeyed the rules of the trilogy, so mm-hmm. to speak. Um, and I, I thought it did it well. I thought it did, did it perfectly. Again, like, uh, uh, like was also said, I, I enjoyed the Avengers very much so. But uh, it was also, it's a, it's a lighter movie than The Dark Knight Rises. When you can have darker tones and, and a lot of grit, then I, I'm invested in the movie uh, for sure. And I, what I also found interesting is that someone said on Twitter, they were like, were you surprised that no main characters died? And no main characters really did die. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that's also a thing where uh, when you can keep all the main characters alive and still have people invested, because directors always kill people off in the in the part three of the trilogy just because they think they have to kill people off. People right. die for the sake of dying. Right. And that wasn't done in this movie. So it was like, no, you don't have to do that. Watch. I'll still make a kick-ass movie, and people won't right. get slaughtered. I agree. And, uh, no, we had a, we had a, someone that tweeted in a specific question to you that I wanted you to answer before you took off, and that's um, from at David Kinsella. He asked the Dark Knight Rises ending versus the Mass Effect three ending. Um, can you uh, can you give your thoughts on that quickly? Um, I, I think the Dark Knight Rises ending was a better ending than the uh, initial Mass Effect three ending. I I didn't make a video talking about Dark Knight Rises ending and why we hate it, so I okay. guess I like it a little better. <laughs> okay, great. All right, Jeremy, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna try to keep you on the line. If you lose you, that sucks. But we're gonna try to do the best that we can. Um, all right, now we're gonna take a phone call here from Kevin from Connecticut. Kevin, what's up, man? Hey, Christian. It's um. I I just want to say I saw the Dark Knight Rises. I loved it, but. Ever since I saw it, there's this interesting question that's been going on in my mind. I'm wondering if anyone else feels this way. Um, Do you guys really feel this should have been a trilogy? Or do you feel like Christopher Nolan should have made a movie then this? Because I kind of feel like I would have liked Christopher Nolan to have made a movie with, like, the Riddler or something like that, and then did the ending. All right, well, thank you for the Zodiac Killer calling in. I love that point, though, Kevin, because it's what what we were talking about earlier, is that I... you, even with a three-hour movie, it felt like too much had been crammed into this. So I would have liked, but again, I'm a selfish comic book fan, so I want to see eight of these movies. And, and I would have trusted Nolan with Poison Ivy and, and Arnold as a villain. I would have trusted it. I would have at least gone in. It might not have delivered, but I would have gone in. So yeah, I could I could see that. Wouldn't that be uh, fun Kevin to do with a like movie that. is just give Christopher 
Nolan as much shit as you could possibly throw at the guy and then see if he can still make a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, all right. So we're going to take a couple more calls. Right, one thing I want to announce here, because we uh, last week on our on our podcast, we talked about a, a Batman, uh, Dark Knight Rises poster giveaway. We did it. Our our winner from last week, and I will be tweeting this person or Facebooking them to let them know they won. Get their It was that, uh, that movie nerd, Kevin. Kevin Morrison won the poster and basically the way he won was he shared our uh, our Dark Knight Rises review. So this is how you, we have one more poster to give away. So what I'm going to do today on our Facebook, make sure that you join us on Facebook slash Schmoes Know or follow us on Twitter and uh, once this link is up, this Toad Hop link, um, what I need you guys to do is either retweet it or tag us on Facebook and then it's kind of like a lottery. We'll pick somebody that has tweeted it and has tagged us and we will announce the winner of the Dark Knight Rises poster next week. Next week. They're pretty sweet posters yeah, too. Are. That's a cool in Im- All the images like the broken mask and the Bane and Batman, they all look awesome so it's going to look cool in your room or on your ceiling. Alright, so here we go. One last call before we uh, take off. We got um, Andrew. Um, okay, Andrew, what do you got, dude? Hi, um, out of the Batman trilogy, which one was your favorite movie? Okay, great That's question, That's how Andrew. you close the podcast, Thanks, Andrew. Andrew. Well done. Too. I would like to begin the answer to that question for all three of us with the one that has the word begins in the title. Batman Begins, I caught it on FX a couple days ago, and it is just so, so good. I'm an origin story uh, honk, I love those things, and it was so. That's maybe my favorite comic book. It surprises movie ever. me so much that you, because of that reasoning, that you didn't like this movie more. Because I felt this, and for some obvious reasons too, the Dark Knight Rises was more of a sequel to Batman Begins than it was to Dark Dark Knight. So yeah. I'm, I'm really surprised that you. That but you it thought. wasn't as as good of a all right, film. All right, all right, all right. And they right. tried to cram that that Batman Begins thing back into it yeah. when he's got to become Batman again, and it, I just didn't buy into it. As uh, much. Kenny, what do you have? Uh, I'm glad you said it because then I don't feel afraid to say it. I actually enjoy Batman Begins the most. Okay. Uh, Dark Knight's the Empire of the Trilogy. I get yeah. it. Uh, this one's the Jedi without the Ewoks dancing. I get it. <laughs> Batman Begins was uh, smoother, sleeker, uh, uh, you know, because it's the first one. And I and I also, and I, no, no time to go into it here, but I like the vision of Gotham in Batman Begins mm-hmm. versus kind of the, um, well, it's, it's, not, bad in, the, it's not bad in the other ones, but um, the vision of, of Gotham as a city itself in the first one I thought was uh, yep. a little more artsy and, and interesting to me. I I love Batman Begins. I uh, I love The Dark Knight. It's one of my favorite movies as well. I I think I'm on, on the high right now, but the reason I'm saying Dark Knight Rises as my favorite right now is it's probably because it's fresh in my head. I don't know, but I just thought it was such a wrap up. I was emotionally invested, um, and I just thought it tied in so much nicer the ending. So, all right, guys, that's it. we're wrapping up here. Um, so again, follow Kenny Knapsack at, at K O Z P A N. You follow us at Schmoes No YouTube.com slash Schmoes No Jeremy Johns YouTube.com slash Jeremy J A H N S. And uh, this is the Dark Knight Rises podcast. Hi, Ian Frank Show coming up next for all those who called in who tweeted who listened to us thank you so much for listening to the schmoes no movies podcast talk to you next week